foundations of democracy and national development of our nation. Our party with its strong belief in freedom of the individual in a liberal democracy state, a commitment to free enterprise, human rights, and private initiative has positioned Ghana as a place for economic growth and prosperity. Our founding fathers will be proud of the numerous social interventions and development policies the MPP initiated towards alleviating the plight of the average Ghanaian, transforming the economy, whether in the areas of health, education, social welfare, job creation, industrialization, agri agriculture, among others. And of course, above all, good governance. Anniversaries are important occasions. We celebrate our achievement on anniversaries as we must and with pride. But we must also use the opportunity to to take stock of where we are, how we got here, and where we are healed as a political organization. More importantly, we must use the opportunity to assess our values and, recabil and re recabulate our strategies to ensure our continued relevance as a party of like-minded people committed to building a better Ghana and a brighter future. As we celebrate the 29th anniversary, let us commit ourselves to the true ideas of patriotism that is captured in our party's name and embedded in our history and the vision of our founding party. the true ideas of patriotism that is captured in our party's name and embedded in our history and the vision of our founding fathers. We must renew our commitment to the relentless pursuit of selfless dedication to service in the interests not only of our party but to our country. Ghana. The core value of the New Patriotic Party is commitment and dedication to public service. On one FM. On one FM. In the interest of the people to build a better Ghana. And I believe this is what Enda Nanado Danko Akufuado our party is doing at the moment, irrespective of the ugly noises and sometimes direct confrontation that people would prefer this country to get to. Ghana, we must remember that what will keep us in power and help us build a sustainable future is our dedication to deliver faithfully to the people of this country. And non FM. We must on this occasion celebrate our successes, of course, in winning the mandate and trust to govern Ghana in two successive elections at this time. But we and must also FCM. remember that more than ever before, we need to strengthen the foundation of our party if we are to sustain our vision for the future and continue winning the man with this saying. I have always maintained that a serious challenge we face that threatens the sustainability 
of our party is that of financial independence. To operate effectively, our party needs sustainable sources of income. We need to develop a more effective system that encourages and coordinates contribution and donation from the rank and file and to make our party independent and respectable. I'm not saying that only of our party, but any political party in our country, if it survives and to contribute towards democracy, it must indicate and make sure to the people of this country that it is by itself independent and can sustain itself. Since 2016, we have won two elections in a row with President Leonardo Danko Akufuado as the party's flag bearer, a proud record. And that his able leadership, the government of Ghana has made significant economic and progressive and progress. And that continues to attract international praise and attention. We have reason to be proud of our achievements. And yes. not FCM. But how do we ensure that it is sustained? How do we ensure our continued relevance? And above all, how do we sustain the trust of the rank and file of our party to work hard to ensure coupled with the growing demand from the Ghanaian populace for improving living conditions across or access of more social services, provisions of basic 
developmental needs call for proactive measures that will grow party and its membership and keep it united. On FM. The next stage of Ghana's multi-party democracy will be defined and heavily influenced by a development discourse that translates into positive impact on the common or average Ghanaian within the shortest possible time fr frame. The COVID-19 pandemic has tested our ability to manage the country very difficult, even in very difficult circumstances. The NPP, led by Nana Dudanko Akufuado, has excelled in its leadership in managing the COVID crisis in our country. And proven proving the efficiency of our party in government. The MPP has always led its in, in innovating what comes to Ghana body politics and democratic development. As champions of democracy, the MPP owes the Ghanaian people a duty of care in ensuring our democratic system is beneficial to its people and social and economic development, and more importantly, that it endures. It is time for the MPP to develop an improved version of democracy that works better for national building. A system that provides quality and long-lasting development beyond the four-year cycle for our communities. The party must have a clear roadmap on how it seeks to remain in power beyond 2024 and work hard with the government to achieve such a very ambitious task. About 29 years, this occasion calls for sober reflections on our democratic journey as a party and also as a country. Let us ask if our best has been good enough for the greater Ghanaian population and ensure that we create a stronger reconnection with the people. This will be maybe a statement in the capacity of a national chairman on such anniversary occasion. I wish to charge all leaders and members of the party to prioritize party unity over parochial interests. This is the only way that will keep us still on top of government and uh, our contract with the people of Ghana in terms of its development. This is the only party that could deliver and we must keep it so by being very united, irrespective of our personal interests. With the expected party activities and internal, contesting com internal contests coming up in a few months, I urge all of us to effectively engage in reorganizing the party to make a significant impact on the 2024 general election. The task ahead can only be accomplished through the party unity and hard work. And hard work is in this almost five years and that the good leadership of Leonardo Dankwa Kufuado backed by his intelligent vice chair and of course his executive, his cabinet and all others who have been helping him. It is for us to be united, to remain united behind the party. I will pray that in this bivouac of our life, even under COVID-19, we wouldn't be dumb driven cattle. We remain heroes in the strife to keep Ghana afloat and let it be still the shining star of Africa. On this occasion that we are celebrating our 29th anniversary, 
Oh, my privilege. privilege. It is my privilege to say that congratulations, happy anniversary. Whether you are here, you are anywhere else in this country, across the length and breadth, or in the diaspora. Congratulations, Anadu Danko Kufado, for the good work you've been doing. Congratulations to all of us for having survived and still on top of the age. Thank you very much. And non air seeing. And non air seeing. And non air seeing. Thank you very much. And now, so Kasama, you're calling your 29 years. In fear, do you know Chrome? Ousu Ajama. Excellency, the distinguished president of this republic, Excellency, the vice president, our dear love, regional officers of the party, I've seen one major food soldier from Kumasi who has joined us here today. Uh, regional officers of the party, constituency officers across the country, electoral area coordinators, polling station, executives and polling station members, and all new patriotic party members. I greet you and thank you and for the good work you've done for this party for all these years. Wednesday, the 28th of July, 2021, marked the 29th anniversary of our beloved New Patriotic Party. Being such a significant milestone in the life of our party and country, we rightly so should have been climaxing this anniversary with the necessary grandeur. However, due to the new normal, imposed by COVID-19, we chose to have a limited media engagement rather than the full participatory celebration that this occasion deserves. Yes, indeed, the new Patriotic Party deserves to celebrate its contribution to the 29 years of democratic growth in this country. The MPP is a center-right political party. We believe in inclusive government for stability and prosperity. We believe in a Ghana beyond age, fostered through democratic practice for sustained economic growth. We believe in the private sector. We believe in individual enterprise. We believe in the family system, and we believe in the protection of the human rights of its citizens. Above all, we believe in listening and including all and sundry in the governance of our country. This anniversary marks the longest period of democratic practice in our country since independence. 
In the period, Ghana has earned an enviable reputation for political stability and security. Political stability is a valuable brand to be cherished, protected, and enhanced. The MPP therefore takes this opportunity to congratulate all stakeholders who have supported the growth of the Fourth Republic. Diverse political parties, the judiciary, parliament, the executive including public servants, the media, independent governance institutions of states, traditional authorities, security agencies, faith-based organizations, civil society including but not limited to organized labor, professional associations, welfare associations, academic students, traders, farmers, teachers, health workers, drivers, contractors, and artisans, the public services, the private sector, and the international community have all uh, contributed immensely to the stability that has enabled this celebration today. Being our birthday, the biggest thanks goes first of all to the Almighty for bringing us this far. We also are very thankful to the founding fathers and mothers of our great tradition. From the days of the UGCC in the 1940s to the days of the Ghana Congress Party, the National Liberation Movement, the Northern People's Party, the Togolese Congress Party, the Gansifi Mokbe, the United Party, the Progress Party, and the Popular Front Party. This is our roots. We also remember the stalwarts who sacrificed their wealth, time, intellect, to nurture and grow rule of law and individual rights in Ghana. Since the occasion calls for it, I will attempt to mention but a few in no particular order, missing the old and the not too old, accepting that though it's impossible to name all the heroes and heroines of democracy here, they are known to the history of Ghana and especially to the group of the new patriotic party tradition. Forgive me in advance for the many significant omissions for those who stand in line on the last day to add up to our winning vote tally are all heroes and deserve to be mentioned. I must also say that on this occasion, we thank our youth wing, our women's wing, our Nasara wing of our party. We also thank our vibrant youth at our various tertiary institutions that we've codenamed TESCON, and also thank our diaspora branches of our party. We also, on this occasion, thank all our voluntary groups that every now and then join the party and not during, same. before, and after elections for their wonderful job and invaluable services that they've uh, offered this, this party and this country. I must start quickly by letting you know that, just as I said, we receive our certificate, if it is a corporate organization, it will be Certificate of Incorporation on 28th of July, 1992. And the first executives then, the national chairman was B.J. Darocha. The general secretary was Ejenim Boateng. The treasurer, and no doubt, is now the chairman of the Council of Elders of our great party, Honorable Hakman Ulusu Ajimai. And just as I said, the first national executive, apart from the three officers who were national officers of the party, we had reps represent, representing the various regions. We then had 10 regions. We have Frank Abieze Emisa representing Western Region. We have John Bosu Kwesistio, representing Central Region. We have Henry Odate Lamte, H.O. Lamte, representing Greater Accra. Yao Albert Osebre, representing Volta Region. We have Malon Mark Steven Yawaten, representing Eastern Region. 
We have Dr. Thomas Kwame Abuaje, who was the chairman of the party from the Ashanti region. We have Kojo Owusu Sechre, representing Bronafo region. We have Amadou Kalim, we popularly call business, representing Northern, Northern region. We have Adam Amadi, Amandi, representing Upper East. We have Abdullah Isahaku, representing Upper West region. This is the first National Executive Committee of the New Patriotic Party. We cannot, because I trace the history from UGCC. So there's a need for us to acknowledge our stalwarts who threw out their toil, their hard work, and their resources help in bringing this party this far. And non FM, Pa Grants, JB Dankwa, SD Dombo, KA Buzia, F. Awuno Williams, RS Blay, Yi Akufu Ado, J. Chris Tesson, J. W. D. Graf Johnson, K. Bentil H. Enchil, Victor Owusu, Aram Ponsa, the Rocha I've mentioned already, Balfour, Ose Akoto, Ato Okain, Saki Sek, BK Adama, Harun Eseku, KG Ousu Bonsu, SG Anto, JA Kufuor, His Excellency, Alaji Aliu Mama, His Excellency, Dr. Jones of Oriata, MK Apalo, Mumuni Baumia, RA Kwashi, Kwesilamte, H E O Obechebilamte, William of Oriata, KG of Osu Ama, BDJ. Force and K. Amwakutu for Honorable Hawaii Akubu, Albert Eduboahin, Peter Ala Ajete Jato Kaleo ZK Tedam, Stephen Kereku, I think that Hakmar uh, Oswajiman, Makmenu, His Excellency the President, and a lot of you who were there at the start saw the great contribution from uh, 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 Stephen Kereku and non FCM party. Odoe Size. Adam Amandi, Rita Sobarie, Safu Edu, Sani Gianni Selvi, Sasma, Christian Church, Apia Minka, Teresa Tego, Michael Kwe, Aro Solomon, Nana Edi Ankama, the one of the longest serving regional chairmen for Eastern Region. K A J Dakon, Agnes Okujeto, Kojo Entry Aj. I'm Abuzia, Hakma Usajima, I've not acknowledged already. Ken Ous, Ken Nuwasu, Tommy Ametopo, Peter McMenu, KK Sam, Davi Ama, Ajiri Blanson, IC Kwe, Dan Boche, uh, the General Secretary who took us for the first time to power. Kwamna Patels, Jacob Echebilante, Cecilia Banama, Takrajima, Bishop, and Asantiechi, Yao Oben. Menu J. Addison, Barry Edu, Ejeni Mbwati, F.T. Sai, Alaji Maiga, Osafu Mafo, Cecilia Dapa, Abdul Rahman Salifu, that is C.O.P. His Excellency, Mamudu Baumia, and of course, our human rights fighter and sitting president, His Excellency, Nana Ado Dankwa Akufu Ado. And non -FM. On an occasion like this, sometimes it's, painful, it's a painful history when we try to recall what we now see as democracy was fought for by gallant men. To quote Dr. J.B. Dankwa, his statement that was adopted by the new patriotic party and I quote, the party's policy is to liberate the energies of the people for the growth of a property-owning democracy in this land with right to life, freedom, and justice as the principles to which government and laws of the land should be dedicated in order to specifically to enrich life, property, and liberty for each and every citizen. Way ahead of his time, Dr. Dankwa had clearly stated the nexus between freedom and democracy. An individual guaranteed the freedom to associate, move, speak, worship, and work within the confines of un unambiguous rules of, of law. It's more productive person than one who is oppressed by an authoritarianism. 
And that's the MPP's current motto, development in freedom. The freedoms and rights you and I enjoy today was fought for, especially for, from the forebears of our political tradition. In the famous case of Ari Akoto and seven others, the list of freedoms and individual rights under Article 13.1 of the First Republican Constitution of the 19th CC was construed by the Supreme Court as not being enforceable. They were only for moral suasion to the president who could choose to uphold them or not. However, by 1969, Chapter 4 of the Second Republican Constitution and thereafter, Chapter 5 and 6 of the 1979-1992 Constitution of the Third and Fourth Republican Constitution Republicly, enshrine human rights and freedoms. The MPP is humbly proud of the role its forerunners, founders, members, sympathizers, and adherents played in contributing to enhancing the rule of law and expanding the ambit of freedom of speech, association, movement, and non-discrimination by virtue of status, gender, religion, and ethnic background. That is who we are. We are a party rooted in rich tradition and strong principles and values, which were relevant in the pre-independence era, relevant during the times of independence and its aftermath, and even more relevant um, today and forever. The fact that we are the only political tradition in the country that have survived all republics in pre- and post-independence Ghana, including the most cancerous dictatorial regimes and have stood the test of time, can only be a vindication of the richness and greatness of our political tradition. A tradition that was not built, that was not built around individuals, but it was built around strong principles and values. Since 1992, the MPP has been the champion of electoral reforms. We spearheaded the transition from opaque ballot boxes to transparent ballot boxes. We transitioned from black and white voter ID cards to color ID cards with pictures. We also was a first party in government who introduced picture ID cards for all citizens of our country. We used to have a situation where uh, when the NDC was there, they limited picture ID cards to regional and district capitals alone, saying that it would be difficult for us to capture our brothers and sisters in the rural areas and in the hinterland. We felt that human beings are equal, so we must grant that opportunity for those in the districts and regions to also have picture ID cards. This is the tradition of the new patriotic party. We also ensured a quantum leap from a manual voter register to a biometric voter register and voting. In spite of the disruptive threats of COVID-19, Ghana's general elections of 2020 have been hailed as perhaps the cleanest, most peaceful, and free and fair. Major benchmarks set by our party, led by His Excellency Nana Adudanko Akufuadu, are the full financing without recourse to foreign aid of the 2020 election. For the first time in the history of our country, we've had a general elections. It was fully funded by our own internal resources and not uh, foreign aid from any other person. Out of the eight elections held under 1992 constitution, the 2020 election is the first ever entirely funded by government. The MPP is truly leaving a mark on democratic practice in Ghana once again. That is who we are. On the economic front, every policy of the new patriotic party in government is designed to benefit as many Ghanaians as possible. Moving from Democratic rule in 1992 
The NDC had massive support from the World Bank and the IMF. Yet by the election year of 2000, the country was a highly indebted poor country. The MPP government of President Kufu transformed the economy from a lower middle income status, found oil and gas in commercial quantities, restored and expanded cocoa production, and expanded the financial sector. President Kufu also initiated the introduction of National Youth Employment Program and introduced the Novel Communication Service Tax to help fund job creation and social initiatives. President Kufu directed and pioneered the unprecedented renomination of the Ghana's currency at a point a CD was equivalent to the dollar. Growth rose from 3.7 in 2000 to over 8.7 by 2008. President Kufu led Ghana into its first ever international bond market and took Ghana out of the straight jacket of IMF and World Bank policies subscribed by the NDC. The NDC unfortunately won in 2009 from a growth of 8%. By the time they lost power in 2016, they had brought the growth down to 3.7%. Ghana went back again to the strict restrictions of the World Bank, including ban on employment, arrears to service uh, pro uh, providers had piled up, and there was a debt overhang impeding the energy sector that led to the uh, Doomsaw Lexicon entering encyclopedia of the world. So for the first time, Doomsaw was acknowledged as a word in the, the dictionary and encyclopedia as a result of NDC incompetence. We took over again in 2017 when growth was 3.7 percent. Within just two, three years, by 2000, 2019, we've increased growth from 3.7 percent to 8.5 percent. We've restored macroeconomic stability and we've restructured our public debt profile. We've tamed so and dealt with the financial sector crisis decisively. Over 2 million jobs were generated and is initiated in agriculture and industry, which brought new hope. In April 2019, we had done well enough for the IMF to depart from direct control and revert to Article 4 consultation status. This is a new patriotic party for you. We successfully rolled out some integrated initiative towards agro-industry, which included one district, one factory, one district, one warehouse, one village, one dam, and planting for food and jobs. Heavy investments in the cocoa sector have resulted in the highest ever cocoa crop in Ghana, in excess of a 1 million tons in the 2021 crop season. President Akufuado has also championed a novel premium for cocoa farmers called the Living Income Differential, which pays farmers a substantial premium over and above subsisting world prices. Furthermore, with mobile money interoperability, enabling digital payments across diverse platforms, roping in 70% of the bankable population into the financial space. This has changed the face of banking in Ghana and is set to drive transactions in the African continental free trade area headquartered in Accra, which is another major plus for the new patriotic party and Nana Adodankwa Akufuado's leadership. The president has also championed the successful establishment of a credible automobile assembly enclave in Ghana. Moreover, the revamped Ghana Enterprise Agency is set to drive the SME sector with appropriate policy support. Perhaps President Akufuado's greatest achievement on the physical front is the expansion of the tax base by over 50 million names. This is a jump of nearly five times 
the number of taxable sources available, implying the possibility of no new tax or additional tax, yet with increase in revenues as the current tax levels are applied to the vastly expanded base. This is progressive tax system that has been introduced. I must say, without any ambiguity, NPP, despite its center right ideology, has implemented more social intervention programs than any other political party in the history of this country. Despite the fact that we are a center right political party, because we care for the masses, we care for the poor. There's no party in this country that has implemented soci more social intervention program than the new patriotic party. Kufo established the national health insurance and provided free maternal health care. He introduced the livelihood empowerment against poverty for indigent families and provided a capitation grant and the Ghana school feeding program. He undertook pension reforms, instilling sanity and bringing relief to retirees. He also initiated cocoa mass spraying, creating new jobs, higher yields, and increased incomes in the cocoa sector. President Nana Adukdankwa Kufuadu has also continued with innovative social interventions. One of his greatest legacies is free senior high school education. This is set to provide a literate society which will ensure skills and technical innovation to feed the industrialization drive of our government. We have also delivered one constituency, one ambulance program, a drone service for delivery of medical supplies. This is the first time. And our drone service here is one of the best in Africa, if not in the world. We quickly restored teacher training allowances that was scrapped by our, our, our predecessors. We also restored nursing training allowances. We introduced allowances for Arabic and Isla Islamic instructors under the National Volunteer Service Program and the absorption of examination registration fees for BEC and WASI candidates. He also brought NAPCO, which employed over 100,000 graduates. You remember that before we came, we were, before 2017, we were under the strict aprons of the IMF as part of the condition employment had been freezed. Because of the innovative policies of our government, we were able to get out of the aprons of the IMF. And by this, we were able to introduce NAPO, which employed over 100,000 of our youthful uh, uh, people or youthful Ghanaians of our country. Now, NAPBO employees are being absorbed into permanent jobs in the public sector. The Zongo Development Fund that was established is also expected to transform the lives of many youth through skills training as well as modern sports facilities in selected communities. The MPP government is the champion of rapid digitization of government services to improve access and turnaround time, reduce human contact, and ensure integrity of payment and receipts, and the quality of records. Paperlet post system, digital address system, online passport application and processing system, online production of driving licenses, national identification card system, national health insurance system, are all taking government service delivery to a new level. The recent launch of the Ghana.gov platform will make things even better, as most government services may be accessed online from the comfort of your home or offices. And non FM. Ladies and gentlemen, some of the best ways of preventing corruption, including minimizing human contact and strengthening the capacity of regulatory and monetary enforcement agencies. Pre President Kufo legislated the strengthening public procurement and internal audit systems. President Anna Adudankwa Akufuado has enhanced the legal framework 
and invested heavily in improving the financial and operational capacity of independent regulatory and oversight agencies, including the judiciary, SHRAD, EOCO, security services, and parliament. The MPP has also established the Office of Special Prosecutor with unprecedented independent powers to initiate investigations and prosecute corruption. He has also ensured that after pending in Parliament over, for over 20 years, the right to info information bill or legislation has been passed. We've also passed a new Companies Act and also passed Land Acts to ease bottlenecks in the private sector. As for free speech, both presidents, Kufo and Akufuado, are enthusiasts of the media and media freedoms. They significantly enhance the space for engagement with the repeal of the criminal libel law. President Anna Dodanko has gone further with the passage of the age-long right to information bill and also set up the Right to Information Commission. Free speech has expanded tremendously, especially with the heightened resort to social media. Along with the expansion has come investment in infrastructure and services, creating a new brand of jobs, incomes, and multiple channels of feedback. The vibrant social media culture has led to the establishment of one of the most successful and enviable social media uh, corporations in, in the form uh, by Google and Twitter. They've estab established their corporate office here to take care of the whole of Africa. This tells you that the business environment in Ghana is very, very peaceful. Ladies and gentlemen, friends in the diaspora and stakeholders, Politics as practiced now is the best alternative out of all the governance systems Ghana has experienced since 19, since independence. We've had one party rule, we've had military rule, we've had authoritarianism, we've, we have also tried the Westminster parliamentary system. Agreeably, none of those systems endured because they did not provide the inclusiveness and participation that we crave as governors and the governed. Mistakes will obviously be made, but the endurance of the Fourth Republic in the face of fierce partisanship demonstrates that the democratic institutions and processes, however slow and uncertain, is the best way to go. Mr. Chairman, I am pleased to once again inform the Ghanaian people that very soon the party will provide the opportunity in every neighborhood for you to register your name and join this great tradition. We have also initiated setting up of the party institute that will take party people through the study of communication, policy ana analysis, our ideology, understanding our ideology, research, and other related political issues. The MPP humbly asks that you support the party school to succeed, to further enrich policy de delivery and democratic process. Ladies and I cannot end my review of the past 29 years without a comment on the global COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic threatens our very way of life, affecting not only our health, but also disrupting businesses and social activities. Due to COVID, the IMF estimated that the global economy would contracts by 3.5%, and there will be a reduction in trade of 9.6%. It is instructive to note that in the year 2020, less than 30 countries throughout the world recorded a positive growth, and Ghana was one of them. In Ghana, sweet mobilization of technical, material, and financial resources, as well as smart planning, have led to a quick rebound from a depression in growth of 0.4%. We are estimating that by the end of the year, we'll grow by 4.7%. Other countries are growing in negative numbers. 
If you check other countries and their debt profile, from 2000, from 19, uh, 2019 to 2000, most of the countries are, are having debt deficit of over 10% increments throughout the world. In some cases, 20%. In some cases, 10%. So the debt overhang and debt difficulties are things that are with us throughout the world. But we have taken the bold step. We are not seeing what is being seen in other worlds where people are dying by the day. The president has taken the bold initiative. And his initiative, with a statement that he made, that he know what to do to bring our economy back to life. What we do not know how to do is to bring people back to life. This is an iconic statement that the whole world has taken cue from. And our government is running top high in the management of COVID. I want to plead that it is not over yet. Let us continue to observe the safety protocols. And it is our own life that we are observing. And I believe that with the sterling leadership of His Excellency Nana Adudan Kwakufuado, we shall make headway. We shall make headway. The new patriotic party shall make headway. In conclusion, ladies and, and gentlemen, we continue to extend a hand of hope to our food soldiers and youth and ensure them, assure them that they will always remain the heart and soul of the party. The longer the party manages Ghana, the more likely we will all enjoy inclusive growth. The longer MPP manages Ghana, the more opportunities for new jobs and higher incomes. The longer MPP manages Ghana, the more social intervention like free education and improved health care. The longer MPP manages Ghana, the more the private sector will expand with jobs for the youth. On this note, I want to thank you for coming. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Assalamu alaikum. 107.1. This is how it is done. Oman Thank you very much. You know, once again, let me acknowledge the presence of Home Base TV, um, ETV Ghana, Happy FM, Kingdom TV and Radio, GH1, Star FM, Metro TV, Join News, Soon to Me TV and Radio for your live telecast. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the theme for the 29th anniversary is NPP at 29, a tradition for stability, prosperity, and continuity. NPP at 29, a tradition for stability, prosperity, and continuity. Mr. DJ, also let me acknowledge the presence of the majority leader in parliament, the Honorable Osei Chairman Sabonsu. So DJ, if you are ready, can we have a minute of musical interlude? Then I will introduce the main man for the day. Thank you. A man FM. A man FM. 107.1. This is how it is done. A man shaping the nation. One hundred seven point one. This is how it is done. A man shaping the nation.
the President Kufo, and again, our previous flag bearer, and currently the President of the Republic and Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. This is how it is done. A man shaping the nation. Mr. Vice President, National Chairman of our party, General Secretary, the National Officers, the Chairperson of the Council of Elders, Majority Leader and Minister for Parliamentary Affairs, brothers and sisters of the New Patriotic Party. And one FM. Yesterday, the nation celebrated the beginning of its fight for freedom that was lit on the 4th of August in Sopan, 1947. By one of those coincidences that perhaps have divine blessing, today, we're celebrating the 29th anniversary of the New Patriotic Party, the party that has dedicated itself to advancing the ideals and values that were established on that day, the 4th of August, 1947. And one FM. A political tradition that was born on that day has gone through a lot of challenges, a lot of turbulence, a lot of difficulties, but has consistently emerged stronger and stronger. So today, the challenges that confront our country the difficulties that we have been plunged into by the COVID is going to give us the opportunity to grow stronger and stronger. And, one FM. and that strength, that strengthening of our party, its, its organs, is going to mean one thing, and I'm very, very confident of it, that on the 7th of December 2024, the new MPP presidential candidate is going to win the election of 2024. And not FM. And not so FM. Our, our objective, our responsibility is to do whatever it is necessary to make sure that that victory is forthcoming. We have to continue our way forward in Ghana. We cannot accept the backsliding that takes place every now and then. It hasn't benefited our nation, and it will not benefit our nation. The foundations that we're laying today for the prosperity of our nation are going to be shaken if, again, through our own fault, we allow the path to progress to be diverted. Yes, 
The nation is facing challenges, difficulties. But these challenges and difficulties can and will be overcome. They can and will be overcome because we have the policies, we have the program, and we have the values that will enable us to continue our journey of development in freedom. On one FM. So, I'm very happy that I have the opportunity as president to celebrate this day because my whole life has been dedicated to the struggle of our party. And I'm happy that on such an occasion, one of the men, one of the most valiant men on that day, the 28th of July, 1992, who was then our national treasurer and did so much to bring into being the certificate that we received on that day is today here with us as chairperson of the Council of Elders. On one FM, he's standing here for all the others who have gone ahead to meet their maker. He's standing here as a symbol of the continuity of our party. And I'm very, very privileged to be part of that history of struggle, of that history of progress, of that history of loyalty to the best principles of Ghana. It's difficult for us today to celebrate the occasion with the abandon and the freedom we would have liked. We cannot overlook this awful pandemic that has hit the world and our country. And that is why we have to do our celebration in a muted way. But be that as it may, everybody who subscribes to the values of development and freedom, the values of the MPP, wherever you are, abroad or at home, today is a day for celebration. And it's a, de a day that we're able to say, with our chest held high, that we continue to be in the service of our country. Thank you so much for your, your presence here. And we will FM. continue this, our struggle. Thank you. And one FM. 107 for one. This is how it is done. Among shaping the nation. <laughs> Now, one chakra near what you say, and people are my new corner, what in nineteen ninety two, no, and near my who do a near woman is what do you know, and my woman Ghana, no, and there are my new queer pain, hope, and to me achieve abrosumpo, almost a crime and abroso, not just a no cray, a man you queen, any.